How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Mother Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on this next potential tropical serum that could potentially develop into tropical sorbonne in the near future right around the Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico and we'll also talk about the what likely will become tropical storm blasts in the eastern pacific but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content so let's begin by taking a look at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook provided from the national hurricane center and you see that we're most likely going to see at least a tropical depression or tropical storm within the next five days where we have a high 80 percent chance right around the eastern pacific and you see that it's pretty much hugging the southern mexican coastline and while it does look like it may just stay out to sea for the most part the reason why i want to point this out is mainly due to the fact that we're expecting to receive a, a gyre right around central america that could maybe spawn more tropical cyclones in the more long-term future in the relatively long-term future where we could potentially see a uh, tropical cyclone develop not only in the eastern pacific but in the atlantic as well now taking a look at the atlantic side of things when it comes to the five-day tropical weather outlook you're gonna see that um right now the national hurricane center isn't necessarily expecting any new tropical cyclones within the next five days however i wouldn't be surprised if that chance does change in the future because the gfs model is still persistent on developing at least some sort of tropical storm just off the central american coast however there's still a high amount of uncertainty because we still have both of the two most reliable computer models still disagreeing with each other despite the fact that we're getting closer and closer to that time frame where if tropical storm bonnie were to develop it'll be almost relatively soon so if let me first show you guys the gfs model what it's forecasting so it's a little bit different from yesterday because now the gfs model is leaning more towards developing a more stronger storm compared to yesterday where it was barely a tropical storm and we barely had a well-defined low pressure system but it's a bit different today because we see that as early as 102 hour mark which keep in mind that's less then um uh, that's less than five days out um the gfs model wants to develop a low level center where the pressure drops to 994 millibars which is strong enough to be considered a tropical storm at that point and the gfs model as a result of uh, the a strong steering current that being the bermuda ridge located right around the middle of the atlantic and this ridge located right around the eastern half of the united states on the gfs model wants to take this northward and pretty much hugging the central american coast so whether this develops or not central america still needs to pay attention to heavy rain um for the next couple of days not only for this old person but for a gyre that's developing that's expected to move in within the next several days because like i've been saying for the past several days um a uh, plume of moisture is expected to move northward and that's what both the gfs model and the european model are agreeing on what they're really disagreeing on is if we'll see tropical storm bonnie or not but they're bo they both seem to agree on that we're gonna see at least see tropical storm blasts right around the eastern um pacific just pretty much hugging the southern mexican coast but it does become more uncertain when it comes to developing tropical storm bonnie but um, while the GFS model is still very lenient on bringing somewhat of a strong tropical storm just off of Central America, the European model is disagreeing with it. And at this point, I'd probably lean a little bit more to the European model, mainly due to the fact that the amount of Saharan dust we're seeing right around the Caribbean will inhibit much con enough convection from going on around um, around the, cent the central area of the Caribbean. So that could um definitely inhibit this storm and that will likely inhibit the um um this moisture as it moves northward and this convection right around the caribbean for a tropical storm to develop but we can't completely disregard the gfs model either because it's still quite a reliable computer model if we were to take a look at the relative humidity the gfs model is forecasting in the mid levels of the atmosphere you see that really stable air won't won't really be much of a problem for this low pressure system or much of an inhibiting factor at least according to a gfs model but it's a stark contrast when you take a look at the european model and the european model i think is a little bit more realistic because like i said we're seeing an abundance of saharan dust which is typical during 
the early part of the hurricane season if we were to take a look at the gf the european model at the same time frame while we do see a decent amount of moisture throughout the southwestern portion of the caribbean it really isn't enough or there really isn't enough of that extreme amount of lift in the right around the caribbean for a well-defined low pressure system to develop and it's also will be inhibited by the fact that the wind shear at least according to the european model will be a little bit stronger but for the most part both computer models surprisingly enough are taking a mainly a light amount of wind shear but i think the inhibiting factor will be at least for the european model will be the amount of dry air because there really isn't enough instability right around the southwestern portion of the caribbean and it's not only that also the land interaction that is expected to deal with the european model is expecting this bermuda ridge and this ridge located right around the eastern half of the united states to be a little bit stronger and be and move a little bit further southward than the gfs model to where most of this moisture will pretty much interact with land which of course will inhibit the probability of a well-defined low pressure system from developing if we were to take a look at the height anomaly to really give a good idea of how strong steering currents will be um we do see um well above average ridging right around the middle of the atlantic and while you don't see it in this er area there is a ridge located right here so this storm will stay relatively um will move relatively further westward than if that ridge wasn't there and of course we have this very strong ridge located right around the united states that's attempting to steer this storm to the west which of course would steer um a lot of this moisture further westward for this storm to interact with more land but compare that to the gfs model the gfs model is expecting a little bit weaker um, um ridging that's slightly weaker to a point where while it's still at least hugging the coast when um this whole pressure is still hugging the coast you see that it isn't moving as far west and it's just offshore enough to where it could develop so we need to pay close attention to steering currents as well because that will play a role in terms of where this storm will move over the next several days to really determine if we'll see a wall to low pressure system or not but um i'd say most likely we um uh, i'd say um it, more likely than not we won't see a tropical storm out of this plume of moisture because of the reasons i stated such as the increased amount of stability as a result of the saharan dust creating a temperature inversion in the middle levels of the atmosphere but it's definitely still something you want to pay close attention to um even though it's still highly uncertain at this point but we'll just have to wait and see because we're still five days out a lot could change so just because it doesn't seem as likely right now does not mean no stay that way because of course we know that the weather changes very quickly so this is definitely something to pay close attention to over the next several days throughout the caribbean i know um i've been saying this for the past several forecasts but it's just the reality of it i can't um there isn't really a high amount of certainty to really say whether or not this will develop so we just need to stay tuned um i man i suspect over the next several days we'll definitely get more certainty um, oh, um, as we get closer and closer to when this plume of moisture moves into the Caribbean. Now, um, to show you guys the um, Saharan dust forecast, which is definitely another very important factor. So taking a look at that, look at how much Saharan dust there is throughout the Caribbean at this point. You see that it's pretty much um, going through um, just off the Yucatan Peninsula and it's pretty much swallowing up most of the Caribbean at this time so um, but we could see maybe the Saharan dust maybe get a little bit less abundant over the next several days but it's gonna take a while for that to actually happen and this area still is relatively small to where the soil pressure system could develop so we do see that the saharan dust does subside but we still have quite a bit of saharan dust just so west of it and we could see it continue to move further eastward and i mean westward and swallow up the caribbean once again so definitely gonna pay close attention to that to really determine the probability that tropical storm bonnie does develop now um now to take show you guys another factor that's important um we're gonna take a look at the mjo outlook and you see that as of right now we're in the negative mjo pattern but you see that um there's some good news that um into week one and into week two 
we could be back into a positive MJO pattern, which would inhibit tropical cyclone development because there's more stability in the atmosphere and less of an upward motion for a high amount of convection to occur. And the MJO pattern typically varies between 30 to 60 days. So um, we're now entering the phase where the air should become more stable and combining that with the fact that the Saharan dust should um, move into the Caribbean, we could see maybe a prolonged period where um, a tropical cycle may not develop, which of course isn't anything unusual. Still expect the active hurricane season, um, but um, um, but for at least the early part, it's pretty typical for tropical cyclone uh, for tropical cyclones not really to develop this early now. Um, today, look at my latest forecast. So I added tropical storm blast in this, which is likely to develop. But um, the good news is that it should stay just south of the southern Mexican coast. But make sure to stay um, off the um, stay out of the ocean over the next several days, just off the southern Mexican coastline, because unfortunately, um, rip currents are um, unfortunately uh, one of the leading causes of weather-related deaths um, around the world, and it's definitely unfortunate because it's one of the most preventable. Um, it's one of the more preventable cases um, where. Um, where you don't need to lose a life just as long as you stay off the ocean. So uh, make sure to um, stay away from the ocean over the next several days because of those rip currents. And of course, um, those waves will be quite high. And um, take a look at um, the Atlantic side of things. The GFS model still wanting to develop tropical storm body. We have to wait and see um, till we get more certainty which computer model will lean towards more. Um, towards the other because the European model does not want to develop anything while the GFS model wants to develop a tropical storm. So it's definitely something we're going to need to pay close attention to um, um, for the next several days. But anyways, guys, I think you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. And I hope you guys all have a great day.